Well, we're covering Deadpool again. Since it's been all of seven episodes since we last talked about the Merc with a Mouth, I don't have much to say except to reiterate my lack of experience with Deadpool. Like I said, I don't know if it was because he popped up in X-Force, which was my least favorite X-Men book at the time, or maybe some other reason, but I just never gravitated to Deadpool. In fact, that's kind of why you see a lot of Deadpool miniseries popping up in my randomizer. It's because I'm so unfamiliar with the character, I just felt it was a good way to ease myself into it. Now, the other half of today's titular duel, Carnage, him I am familiar with. Cletus Cassie was a serial killer who found himself sharing a prison cell with Eddie Brock, a.k.a. the Spider-Man villain Venom. Eddie's costume, which was actually an alien creature called the Symbiote, then broke Brock out of prison. In all the commotion, the symbiote spawned, or in other words, gave birth, to an offspring that worked its way into Cassidy's bloodstream, causing Cassidy to become the entity known as Carnage. Carnage then went on a rampage, embarking on a series of murders that could only be stopped by the combined efforts of both Venom and Spider-Man. However, the trio did put aside their differences long enough to make a pretty decent video game for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Okay, I thought it was a decent game at the time. Now, the funny thing is, along the way, Venom actually reabsorbed the Carnage symbiote. Or, to put it simply, he... he ate it. And Cassie would then discover a similar symbiote living in the parallel dimension known as the Negative Zone. It was actually this Carnage symbiote that gave birth to a spawn named Toxin, a character we covered way back in Episode 9 of the Random Trade Review. Carnage also popped up on an episode of the Random Trade Review covering the first arc of the New Avengers. There, the superhero known as the Sentry flew Carnage into the stratosphere and then ripped him in half. He got better, possibly by being cured by the same team of scientists who managed to cure Mr. Burns' 17 stab wounds to the back. In reality, the symbiote jettisoned Cassidy's body during the ascent. Cassidy was injured and spent time in a prison infirmary where a dormant piece of the costume eventually made its way back to him and allowed him to become Carnage once more. This is where today's story actually picks up. This is Deadpool vs. Carnage. At a diner in Kansas, a local patrolman opines on a report that Carnage is on the loose once more. Little does he realize that the symbiotic psychopath is sitting right next to him. Carnage then goes on to take out the rest of the diner's patrons. Meanwhile, Deadpool is watching a news report about the attack. Wishing to partake in something a bit more entertaining, Wade starts flipping through the channels. It's then that he receives a message via his TV that he, and only he, is capable of bringing Cassidy to justice. With that, Deadpool sets out to track down Carnage. He finds several clues, like raw meat from a butcher shop, leading to an ex-butcher going to a convenience store, leading to a kid playing an arcade machine, leading to Wade discovering a magazine covering modern-day ghost towns. It turns out that Wade is on the right track, as clear as Cassidy is holed up in an abandoned subdivision outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Deadpool greets his new opponent with a rocket launcher and continues by emptying his gun into Carnage. Carnage is relatively unharmed, though, and soon gains the upper hand, so Deadpool shoves a grenade down Cassidy's throat. Deadpool's moment of triumph is short-lived, as it turns out Carnage isn't alone. Shriek has come to her man's aid. Shriek is a psychopathic killer who has the ability to physically manipulate sound. She gained this ability after being exposed to the dark dimension inside the Marvel superhero Cloak of Cloak and Dagger fame. Shriek met up with Carnage not too long afterwards, and the two formed a twisted relationship, though no open romance has ever been displayed between the two, and they've been inseparable ever since. Carnage grabs Deadpool and demands to know how the Merc tracked him down. Wade explains that Cassidy is just the right kind of crazy. His kind of crazy. Carnage denies this and proceeds to rip Deadpool apart. With his last effort, Deadpool uses a sonic emitter to neutralize Carnage and hits the symbiote with two more bombs, though Wade can't quite get to safety himself. Carnage is once more on phase and impales Deadpool with a tentacle blade before Shriek can carry him off. After regenerating, Deadpool rushes off to an old storage locker he owned, only to find that it got auctioned off in an episode of Storage Wars. Wade tracks down the individual who purchased his stuff and finds it now belongs to an apparent superfan. Not a Deadpool fan per se, but just a fan of heroes in general. It turns out this guy is also Wade's kind of crazy and he's also been tracking Carnage's whereabouts. And he points Wade directly towards Chicago. As they plot on the interstate, Cassidy assures Shriek that Deadpool is in their rearview mirror. 
except he's actually in front of them in a rototiller. The two vehicles collide, knocking Shriek unconscious, and Carnage leaping out to confront Deadpool. As the two fight, Carnage plays things serious while Deadpool just quips Way. This culminates with Way getting hurled into an oncoming semi-truck. Deadpool gets spurred on by the gathering crowd, or so he thinks, and he begins taking off after Cassidy once more. Meanwhile, Carnage has commandeered a family's minivan where he tries playing Deadpool's game and begins looking for possible clues hidden in media. Deadpool remains hot on Cassidy's trail, at least when he's not stealing a little girl's burrito, and he comes across the minivan outside another ghost town in Wisconsin. Deadpool pieces together what Carnage was looking for in the town. It turns out the town was actually a cover for the hidden headquarters of the Life Foundation's Mercury team. Carnage isn't the only spawn of the Venom symbiote. There are actually five others who came into possession of a group of corporate bigwig doomsday preppers called the Life Foundation. Eventually, these symbiotes will be given over to a group called the Mercury Team, and they consist of Riot, Phage, Agony, Scream, and Lasher. They also got their own video game. Yeah, that one didn't turn out too well. Carnage got the jump on the Mercury team and killed the humans before they could get to their suspension tanks that held the symbiotes. He then went on to smash the tanks containing his brothers and sister. Carnage then lured Deadpool into the facility and ripped Deadpool into pieces. However, the symbiotes aren't actually dead as they managed to migrate over to a guard dog who avoided Carnage. The symbiotes, save for Lasher, bond with Deadpool as he regenerates. Lasher stays with the dog. Meanwhile, Carnage has made his way over to a nearby psychiatric hospital, and he begins killing the staff as the patients watch. This gets interrupted by a shotgun blast from Deadpool. Wade then sicks Lasher Dog on Cassidy before using the other symbiotes to sneak attack Carnage. Lasher Dog then goes after Shriek, who blasts him only to fall for the symbiote's illusion ability and thinks she took down Cassidy. Unable to tell who is who, Shriek runs off. Deadpool then hits Carnage with two small grappling hooks and begins swinging the villain around. Deadpool then stabs Carnage in the eye, but Cassidy lands a quick counter blow and runs off after Shriek. However, Deadpool is able to locate her first. Carnage then happens across Deadpool and manages a sneak attack once more, only to realize too late that it was another illusion and he really attacked Shriek. Hours later, the authorities comb the psychiatric hospital where they find Carnage quietly sitting in a cell. He intends to stay there until Deadpool gets out of his head. Deadpool, meanwhile, leaves the other symbiotes with Lasher Dog as he moves on to wherever his heart will take him. And so ends Deadpool vs. Carnage. How was it? Well, on the plus side, I really like a lot of the banter between the characters. I like the fact that Deadpool is basically using his insanity in order to track Carnage's insanity. Um, there's a lot of good, wacky, off-the-beat parts that seem to click pretty well. Also, the series is really quickly paced. Uh, this is four issues long, but it reads like it was only two issues long. That's how quickly it goes by. Also, I like the fact that unlike the previous Deadpool vs. series I reviewed, Deadpool vs. Hawkeye, we actually do get Deadpool vs. Carnage a lot in this. That being said, unfortunately, the artwork is a little bit of a drag on this book. Um, the Deadpool parts are fine, but uh, Carnage doesn't look like the freewheeling, maniacal Carnage that we've all come to know and love. He looks like a Carnage cosplayer sometimes. Also, Shriek really doesn't add anything to the plot. Her presence is almost entirely vestigial, except to be accidentally attacked by Carnage at the climax of the story. And not only that, but if uh, you recall when I was setting up the stage for the series, uh, that part is kind of a prologue issue that was actually included in this trade, but for some reason it was at the end of the trade and not the beginning, which is really where it belongs. Yeah, I know, that sounds like a weird nitpick, but yeah, that does kind of stick in my craw a little bit. That's why I'm going to give Deadpool vs. Carnage a C. And with that, let's see what we'll be doing next time on the Random Trade Review.
patreon.com slash sleepy time for cat productions where you can request a trade to be placed in the randomizer aka the cardboard box <laughs> <laughs>